What Trump usually does is he runs something into the ground and then he sells it off. And that's yeah. what you do with real estate. Right. And and we just saw them, you know, blow blow up his uh, old casino in, in yes. uh, Atlantic City. Yes. <laughs> that was that was cathartic for all of us. Unfortunately, he can't really he can't implode the airplane. And <sighs> well, he can send not... it to the airplane graveyard outside of Tucson. Well, and that's one of the things they talked about. Yeah. Like what what's stupid about what he's done is he stopped flying the plane. Right. As soon as he took office mm -hmm. so it's basically been sitting on this tarmac outdoors in the elements exposed and like you said they send most planes to the graveyard down in tucson right and the reason they store planes there is because they dry arid environment they're not going to rust they're not going to corrode right this thing has been sitting out in in, in humid weather in the summer and in snow in the winter where it's you know always damp <laughs> right <laughs> yeah I, I believe they said one engine is completely off the plane. The other one is shrink wrapped. Okay. And the just to get it, get the engines themselves in repair. Yeah. Each each one is in the um, six figure area. Oh my god. Plus whatever it would take to inspect the plane and get it up and running. Yeah. Um, like as you said, because it's been sitting out in the cold and the elements sure, for and, so long, and it's damp there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. It's not. It's not. A, it's not a good environment. For no, that, for that not at all. Plan. But but that's also what you see. Living, I've lived in California my whole life. You don't usually see rusted out cars. No, you don't. Like you do when you're in in, in the uh, in, the Midwest in the northern region. When I moved to Chicago in '96, I was trying to sell my car, and everybody said to put in the ad, "This car came from Arizona, so it doesn't have any rust." <laughs> So, and I did. It sold. <laughs> it makes sense. That's, yeah. a, that's one, of those, one of those things I've never had to deal with that issue. But I remember having friends from that uh, up in the Northwest. And that's that, that was a big thing that yeah. everyone was always talking about. Mm -hmm. And also, I believe they talked about how uh, the underside of the car is uh, not as damaged by the, um, the, the salt they put on the road. It, yeah, the, the salt does the damage. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I remember that. that yeah, we story. don't have salt here in California. When you go up to the mountains and there's snow, they require you to to have chains on your tires, yeah. which is not a thing in the rest of the country, apparently. Really? Yeah. You either have I'm... snow tires. Chains do a lot of damage to the pavement. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so you either have snow tires or they salt the roads or or, or whatever. But yeah, uh, here, I know, I've, yeah. I've never driven anywhere where there, I needed chains on my tires. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm a California. I'm California through and through. I, I drove in Boston. I drove in Chicago and in Virginia. We got snow like two, uh, two or three times a year. Um, yeah. But you know, we we never had chains or anything because you know the the trucks would come through and salt the roads or or yeah, plow the, or plow the roads. Yeah, the, the, when I was a little kid, uh, the the, few, the when we would go up to the snow. Um, it was always the roads were plowed. There yeah. was a ways to get up there. Yeah. And again, this is in, you know, in the mountains near Fresno. So it wasn't that big of a deal. But <laughs> Casey, our videographer says, you guys would love Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I've been there once, Casey. It was in the summertime. Though. Yeah. I, I was there in, in, uh, for the Republican national convention in St. Paul. And that was in September. So it was still nice out. Yeah. Yeah. That was that, that is one thing I do remember from a friend of mine who lived in Minneapolis. He said surprisingly Minneapolis is one of the fittest cities in the country yeah. because as soon as that snow defrosts, everyone wants to get outside. Get outside. Well, outside I felt that way living in Chicago. Something. As soon yeah. as it got above 50 degrees, I'm like it is shorts weather. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, we've lived in California our whole lives. It's made us weak. Yeah. I <laughs> I think last week Sean was like he's like, oh, "Yeah, if it's in the 60s, it's sweater weather for us." <laughs> <laughs> Although it was 53 degrees when I left my place this morning to come to the studio, I'm in shorts. I think today is the first day that I have not turned on the heat when I got up in the morning. Okay, all right. So that's a, that's that's that, that's a big deal around here. Yeah, <laughs> that passes for exciting news. Yeah, but you know what? Back to Trump's but airplane. But we digress. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Trump's airplane. Yeah. Uh, just some fun facts on this. Uh, according to CNN, um, they talked about uh, that it could be flown down to these, uh, you know be stored where there's warm weather they're saying that um 
he's been flying around his little corporate jet, his mm-hmm. little Cessna since then. But oh. the um, the plane itself, he he claims that it costs a hundred million dollars for that plane. You know what? It's probably one of those leftovers from when he had his own airline. Yeah, he probably <laughs> kept one of the planes for private use. It was a write off when he bought it for the private airline, and so it was free to him. That's yeah. probably what happened. Yeah, they, he he claimed it was it was worth hundred million dollars, but they say that the the similar planes like that are selling for more like the seven to ten million dollar range mm-hmm. these days. Mm-hmm. But those planes are not gold leaf plating on the seat belts and all of and they, I think the article said that anything that was metal that could be gold leaf was sure. gold leaf. He basically turned it into a whorehouse in the air. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. There's a huge master bedroom. There's oh, you know, the big 57 inch TV. Yeah. Um, but um, but now it's just it's it's sitting there wasting away. And the reason I brought that up at the beginning of the show because it is a it's not a, an important story, uh-huh. but it is so emblematic yeah. of everything that Trump has done to this country Absolutely. over the last four years. Yeah. I mean, he came in, he ran up a huge debt. And a, a big chunk of that debt was because of his his tax breaks for the rich. Sure. That really didn't help out the middle class. And there's no way to pay that back. Right. It's not like those are generating um, income for the treasury at right. all. It's, it's a loss, yeah. period, no matter how you look at it. Um, l- look at what he did at the border. Uh-huh. He completely broke the system at the border. He claimed that he was building a wall. In fact, um, yesterday, the uh, Department of um, uh, Homeland Security Secretary uh, Mayorkas was all over these Sunday shows, mm-hmm. and that was his that was his big talking point. Um, can we get uh, Tim lined up? Yeah, um, that was his big talking point this weekend. Was that they were left with a broken and dismantled system? Let's cut. 10. Why is it especially challenging and difficult now? Because the entire system uh, under United States law that has been in place throughout administrations of both parties was dismantled in its entirety by the Trump administration. So we are rebuilding the system as we address uh, the needs of vulnerable children who arrive at our borders. Yeah. And I, and it's not just the border. That's what Trump did. That's what he did to um, um, CDC and our ability to respond sure. to these virus outbreaks all over the world. Yeah. He didn't like it. He broke that system. He brought the scientists home. Yeah. Otherwise, there would have been scientists in China on the ground when this all started right. to help stop this before right. before it really started, before it got spread around the yeah. world. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's what he's done to, um, I want to say race relations. I don't think that's quite the right word I'm looking for. But well, he's, xenophobia. He's stoked anti-Asian he, hate. He's stoked anti-Asian hate uh, by calling it the China flu or the Kung flu or whatever. Uh, that okay. that that is demonstrable. Well, well, I mean that, but I mean, like, but go back to it, like first coming down this, the 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 um, the golden escalator at Trump mm-hmm. Tower when he announced himself when he referred to rep, um, Mexicans as rapists and thugs. Mm-hmm. You know, um, very fine people on both sides, in, you know, yeah. Charlottesville. It's it's he's everything that he could break. Uh huh. He broke. Well, yeah, Karen in Chicago uh, has something to say along those same lines. Hey, Karen. Hey, Karen, let's talk about that. Exactly what I said to Krista. Um, Yeah, everything he touches dies. And I just feel like, you know, this. I was telling Krista this weekend I was out. It was We had great weather in Chicago here, and we're just, I was driving around showing properties. And I just had this overwhelming um, sense that things are going to get better. Yes. And I think that once, you know, the indictments start coming down for he and his family and his associates, that we're going to see more and more the, his his name coming off of buildings, and um, he is going to just lose all credibility. And I mean, yeah, there's going to be the crazies out there, yeah. but you know, I I don't know that we should hang everything, all of our hopes and dreams on him and his family getting indicted. I'm not sure that's going to happen. His oh, his sure business his week. businesses have suffered absolutely, yeah. and and there's no question about that. But I, you know, he's weaseled his way out of so many indictments that I'm not sure that 
But I think it's different now, Chris. I really do. I feel like, you know, you can buy off politicians in New York, and he was able to get away with it way back when. But I don't think he's going to be able to wriggle around this because his exposure is so vast Mm -hmm. now. You know, I I just don't see. And there are so many people like before, you know, I talked to my cousin and, you know, she uh, grew up in New Jersey. And so living in New York, you know. Everybody knew that he's a caricature and well, sure. a joke and a fraud, right? Yeah, we um, knew that in the you know, 80s. You know? exact, exactly. Yeah. But I think that, you know, overall, like the broader population throughout America didn't really, you know, he wasn't as on uh, everybody else's radar right. as he was on New Yorkers as being just a complete, you know, grifter. So I feel like, and yeah, you know, he got away with stuff in New York, mm-hmm. um, but everybody is all eyes all the eyes of the world are yeah, on this they, uh, they are you know? I, I guess i'm just for my own feelings i guess i'm erring on the side of he's not going to get indicted so that i won't get get disappointed you know i, I, I totally every, you everybody there, Chris. Every, you know i i just there's been so many times that i've been disappointed that he wasn't indicted mm-hmm. that i you i don't want to get, get disappointed again up. if he's yeah. indicted that's awesome Hello, sailor, you know? Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. No, I I hear you. Yeah, but it's just, you know, and you guys were just talking about the border. You know, ben, I saw Ben Crenshaw. Did you see him um, on uh, MSNBC? Dan, ben Dan Crenshaw. Dan Crenshaw or yeah, Ben? Yeah. Is it ben, the congressman, the Republican. Uh, Dan, Dan. Dan. Dan with yeah, the yeah, eye patch. Yeah, Dan, yes. Thank you. Sorry. So Dan Crenshaw, and he's, a, you know, he's on uh, MSNBC trying to sell that whole notion that joe biden created the mess at the border and it's just getting worse well, that, you know that, and that's a like, load of hooey oh my god it's just, <laughs> we have to push back and i mean yeah. you know i think that forever and ever you know they've been able to get away with you know lying about this stuff and you know suppressing the vote and all this mm-hmm. rest of it and it's like trump just kind of brought it all out sure. in the open and said the quiet things out loud and so you know, when they push this stuff, it's just laughable. And I think the majority of Americans are now seeing who the Republican Party are, yeah. you know, and they're not, I don't think they're going to get away with it. I don't think this is going forward. I don't think I think they've just completely lost all credibility. And I think anybody that has associated called themselves a Republican that are anti-Trump and just don't like what they, they're seeing should just I think they need to leave the party. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, I think so. And and that would weaken the party, which would be great for Democrats. That would be a, a <laughs> lot yeah. of fun for everyone. Yeah. All right. All right, Karen. Thanks for your call. All right. You uh, okay. guys, good luck. Thanks. Guys. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Fingers yeah. crossed here. Yeah. No, just, to, just to, uh, something to add on to what Karen was saying there. Uh, if he's going to get indicted, mm-hmm. it's going to be this week because Stephanie is on vacation. Of course. <laughs> yes. so, so there, there is something to hang our hats on. Exactly. And uh, speaking of at the border, you're, uh, she brought up Dan Crenshaw. Trump of course, was not happy with the fact that Mayorkas was out there saying that he was given a dismantled system. Of course. So he released a statement last night, which is all he can do these days now that he doesn't have a social media platform. Is release a but he said that we yeah. proudly handed the Biden administration the most secure border in history, claiming that Biden, all he had to do was keep it running smooth on, on autopilot. Yep. And he said that he's turned it into a national disaster. No, the national disaster was created by Trump. Exactly. We watched this unfold over the last, the course of the last four years between what was going on with those kids at the border and him failing to build a fence. Yep, yep. It is right. the Stephanie Miller Show. It's 21 minutes after the hour. Uh, we will be right back, and we got the, the root pundit at the bottom of the hour. We got all our regulars yes, we this week, so stay tuned.